In this video, I want us to talk about some subtitle edit features that you don't use, but you should know they do exist. Welcome to this video. My name is David and I hope you're well wherever you are around the world. Now, uh, probably if you just do uh, subtitling, maybe as a hobby and all that, you may not know some of the features in subtitle edit. And I'll begin with the simplest. You can open a couple of subtitle edit instances. For example, I've got this window, I've got this window and so on and so forth. So you can open two subtitle edit windows or more at the same time. So it's not limiting that if you have this open that you can't use uh, anything else. Number two, profiles. Uh, profiles are probably never used that much. Uh, if you don't know or your client, if you're a freelancer, does not know what they're looking for or what they want. So if you want to work with profiles, there's this gear icon settings or you can go to options and settings. Now from here, uh, you can see profiles and this more or less encompasses rules for subtitles. And this, the good thing with this is that you can create your own or use the preloaded ones that are available right here. Most of the times it's on the default and this is what the default looks like. So you may get a client telling you, I need a single line max length of 42. So uh, characters per second or whatever, and the maximum number of lines, let's say they want one. So you can do that. Uh, and simply, if you click on these three dots, you can be able to create your own export, import, copy, new, remove, removal, and so on and so forth. So profiles kind of dictate how your subtitles are going to look like, the kind of warnings you're going to get uh, showing if your subtitles are uh, more or less adhering to the rules you have set. So the profiles are easy to set up. Uh, for example, if you click on new and then call it whatever, let's say social media, uh, and then maybe do something like 37. Uh, maybe you want to go with one line and so on and so forth. So a client may give you this or maybe uh, a subtitling or transcription website that uh, has freelance jobs. You may get some of these things and you may need to load them up or maybe import uh, maybe their profile from them. So click OK and then you can just come here and just go to the social media I've just created. Yeah. And you see, I just changed this one and this and it's good to go. That's profiles. So it's good to know that these things exist. Number three, uh, and I'm going to begin by now loading up a video. I believe it should be this video. Yes. Uh, load a video. Now, let's assume you have two subtitles that you want in the same video of different languages. Now, I can just go to file, open key video and just get one. Uh, so yeah, I've got this one right here. And it's just a subtitle in English and all that. And you can see it's all red. Chances are because it's kind of longer based on the profile that I've kind of just set up for social media and all that. So that is something you need to know about because that is kind of giving you all these uh, red lines. I'm assuming if I actually went for maybe the default. OK, you can see it changes everything. That's why I'm saying profiles are important. But now what we need to look at is uh, maybe let's assume uh, your subtitle needs to adhere to maybe British English. Uh, so it's simple in uh, uh, subtitle edit. Just go to file, plugins. And if you do not know, there are plugins here. And I don't have any installed plugins, so I'll get a plugin. And the plugin here is American. Convert American English to British English. I'll click on download. And there we have it. And if you go to plugins, you can now see it right there. I'll click OK. And from here, I can just uh, uh, select Control A, Auto Translate, and then Convert American to British. Click on that. It's going to go through your subtitles and see which subtitles have what and what needs to be a kind of change. For example, you can see a total of seven. And default it recognizes in British is recognizes. Uh, if you go here, it's uh, for me to install has two L's. In British, it has one L. Uh, if we look here, dialog box in British dialog and all that. Let's see. Yeah, dialog still the same. License here yeah, with an S in British is with a C. 
So you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, recognize, recognize. So it's it's that how it works. Super simple and can save you a ton of time, especially if you're working with uh, a client from uh, Britain or United Kingdom, and uh, maybe your subtitles were more or less in American English. So it's good to know that's not there. Now the next thing is. If you have a scenario of merging now subtitles to subtitles into one, so I'll need to go to file, plugins again, and then get plugins. And then if I scroll down slightly, you'll see merge to SRT to one ASS, e.g. for different languages. I'll click on download and it's done. That's okay. Install plugins and you can see it's available here. And where is this located? Under tools. As you can see for American British English, is in the translate option. So I'll click OK. And from here, I'll go to tools, merge to SRT to one. So this is the style we have right there. And then I'll just click here to get file number two. I believe it should be this particular one. Yes, this one is Swahili. Click open right there. And you can see it right there. So they are the same align bottom, but you can also set a line top uh, to look like that. But if we, even if we say a line uh, bottom, they're going to be there, but stacked on each other. They're not going to be overlapping on each other right there. So you can choose how they're going to be. Are they going to be bold, uh, different font? Uh, the primary, you can say maybe you go with a yellow. Uh, that could be okay. And you can already see how it looks like and an outline. That looks like that. And the output format is advanced substation alpha or SSA. And just click OK. And once you do that, you can see how the subtitles are going to look like. You can see uh, they are already laid out. And one thing you need to take a note of is that now we have style one, style two. And because the format has been changed to advanced substation alpha, if I click on this, you can see the style one and style two. And you can always edit right here. You can see in how many options it's been used. You can also add a new style or import or whatever. So uh, let's assume that's all we wanted for that. Uh, although if you're working with multiple language subtitles and you want to do this, try and just have a single line per subtitle of more or less this length to avoid uh, straining of the eyes and all that. Uh, so that is something I'd like us all to take a note of uh, right inside here. So. That is merging subtitles into one. Uh, what else is really uh, handy uh, right here? Uh, the other one that probably you may not use every day. And this is a scenario I faced a couple of years ago. I had a client that wanted transparent subtitles. And I'm going to actually open and keep video. No, I don't want to save. Let me just get this one. And the client wanted a transparent subtitles uh, more or less uh, for the video. That was the hardest thing I've ever kind of had to do. Uh, and luckily I got a software that helped me then. But in subtitle edit, you can do it uh, by going to video, generate transparent video with subtitles. And we've got that window. And then you can click on preview. And can you can see how your subtitles are kind of going to look like when they're banded. Now, one thing I'll always uh, kind of inform you on is make sure that this is in MOV. If you go for any other format here, some of the video editing applications where a transparent video subtitle is going to be used will not recognize the video. That is the other video formats, MP4, WebM, not most of them are going to recognize, but MOV is going to be MOV with alpha. So it's a transparent video more or less. And obviously there's the batch mode. Uh, you may not think you may need this, but you're going to need them someday. Uh, the next one should be still in the same line, uh, more or less the generate video with banding subtitle, but of importance is the batch mode. And this can save you a ton of time and money, uh, especially when you have a ton of files to work on. Uh, it's something that uh, can uh, save you uh, a ton of time uh, right there. So just add the videos and the subtitles and automatically is going to recognize uh, the resolutions and all that. Uh, quick tip. Always try to work with uh, the same type of uh, resolution videos when you're burning in uh, so that uh, whatever font size you've set here, 
uh, are going to match across. You can't have a video that is in landscape mode and a video that is in uh, more or less vertical or portrait mode, uh, more or less in the batch mode because obviously these fonts are not going to kind of look really good. So that's like more or less the batch mode. Uh, and then I, I believe obviously the same things here. Generate video uh, with embedded subtitles. Now, let's assume you are doing maybe a TV show or something and you've received a ton of files uh, and a client maybe wants you to embed uh, like five more files here. So you can add English. For example, I'm going to add, this should be Arabic, open. And then I've got a Swahili version right here. Uh, so uh, should be, yeah, and I don't think it's the one. Remove, I think should be, no, it should be this one. Yeah, I believe it should be that one. It's just that it's kind of not being recognized as, as Swahili. So uh, with this, you can force, you can force to be the default. So uh, the reason for that is when the video plays, what is the default? So embedding subtitles is a good way. Now, let's look at something else. I've mentioned Arabic. Uh, there's a really neat feature. Let's open Keep Video and just import an Arabic subtitle. And this happened to me once. Uh, Arabic is uh, read and written from right to left. Normally, we used to working with subtitles from left to right. So in Subtitle Edit, you can just make sure you select your subtitle lines and all that, and then go to Edit, right to left mode. And once you do that, you're going to notice that the full stops are going to be on your left, uh, like you see here, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, right there. And this comes in handy, especially when you need to burn in subtitles to a video. And a client has provided you with maybe the subtitle and you've burned it. And it happened to me. I burned, uh, I believe it was a Hebrew subtitle and the subtitles were left to right. The client asked me, hey, what's going on? I thought you told me you can do uh, burning in of subtitles. That's when I mentioned, ah, uh, these are Arabic, uh, these are Hebrew subtitles. So it should be the opposite way. And this comes in handy. And uh, once you do this, obviously with uh, the burning option in uh, subtitle edit, you can save yourself a ton of hassle, especially with exporting and maybe applications not recognizing the right to left feature. Just click on that and just burn in the subtitles. And as you can see, even if I would kind of maximize it, you can see the full stops are on this side and everything kind of changed to the way it should be. Uh, I don't know Arabic, but my assumption is that everything changed as it should be, uh, even in the subtitles. Continuing with some of the features that you really use now, uh, I've got one called History of Changes and it's under Edit and you can see Show History for Undo and all that. Now, this can come in handy. For example, let's assume this particular situation here. Uh, for example, you make a mistake, but let's assume I want to kind of split this uh, because I feel it's a little bit long. Struggling with large PDF files. I can just bring this back a little here. PDF files that are hard to share or upload. What if let's bring this back a little bit. If I told you there's a free fast way to reduce the size of a PDFs without looking. So for example, here, we can actually decide to do something else. But now, uh, what I want to show you is, if I go to uh, edit, you can now see show history for undo. And you can see all the changes you've made at what time, and so on and so forth. So it's really handy. So you can just go back before split line and roll back. And once you roll back, all those changes are done. So if you had made a mistake, then the undo history can really help you save uh, maybe uh, your work uh, without having to redo all that. So that's really important. Another unique feature uh, that you rarely use is the selected uh, subtitle lines. And this one is more or less, if I click on one subtitle line here and just uh, press on shift and click down here, I'm on Windows. If I right click on it, or even just one line, there's something called selected lines. Now, uh, 
this you can do a ton of things there's the audio section where you can do audio to text via whisper for the selected lines via vosk or you can also extract the audio for those lines the statistics you can generate band in video uh, that is band in subtitles for the video multiple replays and just and so on and so forth including translating selected lines and all the way to typewriter effects and karaoke effects or even saving selected subtitle lines as if you wanted somebody to actually see what is going on so those are really used things and sometimes they can save you if you just want maybe a client to see uh, how the subtitles are going to look like at a particular minute for banding subtitles or maybe how the subtitle look like maybe there's an issue uh, maybe with uh, something grammar spelling whatever it could be whatever uh, it is right there but the selected line feature may not be highly used by most people but it's available uh, next up i recently did a full tutorial on collaboration and it's using this networking feature in subtitle edit and uh, what this does is you can remotely work with somebody on a project and i do have a full video on that so you can start a new session gives you all the things that you want you can generate a random key or just write in uh, your own key like that share it with somebody and then they just uh, start and so on and so forth if i click on start and somebody else logs in you can see all this then uh, we can easily see who is doing what at a particular section so let's just uh, leave session that's okay We've got another feature that probably you rarely use and this is uh, under tools and it's the batch convert so you can easily con batch convert subtitle files into whatever subtitle file that you have let's assume you have srt subtitle files you can batch uh, convert subtitles right inside here there are ton of converting options you can do here it's just really really crazy and super simple let's just close this uh, and then we've got something called export to all formats now this is kind of overkill uh, because and I'll go to plugins and just remove it first remove and you can get it from plugins get plugins and just scroll down it should be somewhere here export to all formats download and if you see it in install plugins you'll see it here it's a uh, it's the type is a file so it's under the file menu and if i go to file export 12 formats this is uh, the dialog box that i get uh, you can browse and then once you hit export it's going to export into all these formats in subtitle edit pretty crazy so those are some features in subtitle edit that you rarely use but you may need and maybe a final one uh, could be probably in shortcuts uh, shortcuts save you a ton of time and you may not use them but they're right here uh, for you to see uh, how everything looks like and also maybe the video player with uh, all these uh, that uh, are there uh, for you to kind of see how they're going to be previewing here and maybe what you set for the preview and you like it if you use subtitle edit to burn in your videos then you can make sure that even in this particular window the same kind of applies right here based on what you've set up uh, and so on and so forth but those are some of the few uh, features in subtitle edit that you rarely use but you don't know when you kind of need them uh, in your workflow uh, but it's good to know that they do exist that's it for this video i hope it's of value to you thanks for watching